we've got Thor Love and Thunder review. I'm going to be talking spoilers. If you haven't seen it by now, then you have no intention on seeing it. So I'm going to be spoiling the shit out of this movie. Taika Waititi back at it with his with his humor, with his with his comedy. I'm going to pre- preface this whole conversation with dude, I love what we do in the shadows. Taika's vampire show and the movie that shows peak comedy. Uh dude's hilarious when he's doing that thing. But I am now not feeling his Marvel take on Thor. I liked Thor Love and Thunder. I gave it a 3.5 B minus. I gave it a minus and I'm going to talk to you why I gave it a minus. The humor. The humor, dude. I grew up in the era with where parody movies were at the peak. You know, Scary Movie 3, 4 was boom, boom. We had Disaster Movie, Superhero Movie, and then we had Meet the Spartans. Why do I bring up Meet the Spartans? Because this movie, Thor Love and Thunder, it felt like Meet the Spartans. Spartans! It felt like Meet the Spartans, dude. They, it's literally, look, it, I'm trying not to get frustrated here. They don't take these characters seriously at all anymore. There's no there's stakes and then they undercut it with with humor, with jokes. Jane has cancer. So oh, it's a, it's a tough storyline. We got to lace this movie with humor. And it's not even laced anymore. It's just they're not even trying. And you can tell obviously Chris Hemsworth had fun with it cuz Thor is supposed to be a thespian Norse god. And he said, Chris said he was bored with the first two Thor movies. And you could tell he was bored. That doesn't change the fact that Thor is a Norse god. And I'm not trying to bring up Zack Snyder. But come on, dude. Do you want Thor to be like Meet the Spartans? Or do you want Thor to be like 300? Because right now, it's like Meet the Spartans. And yes, Ragnarok was funny. But there was at least a balance, dude. There was a balance. And that balance was barely there for me with Ragnarok. It was, it was on the verge of being a parody, but not quite. This film just straight up goes comedy. And I kind of feel bad for Christian Bale. Because Homeboy didn't want to do, do superhero movies. You know, they, they cast him as Gore, the god butcher. He only butchers the one god in the opening scene. And then everything else happens off camera. Uh, he's the best part of the movie for me. And the way they shot him in the shadows with his glowing eyes. Some of the cinematography in this film was lit. Everything that has to do with gore in this movie was lit. And then they go over to to Asgard and, and to New Asgard. And they're basically, it reminds me, they, they turned it into a renaissance festival, dude. Like, this is the Asgardians now? They're they're a tourist attraction now? Really? Really? Thanos has an ice cream shop. I don't even know. It's called Infinity Ice Cream or something. Really? It's, it's just things like that. And people are complaining about... Um, this is a little all over the place. Bear with me here. Uh, the whole Meet the Spartans angle. Zeus... Is uh, homeboy had fun with it, right? Like Russell Crowe, he had fun with Zeus, obviously. But they had him in, you know, his pairing. How would you call it? Messing with his skirt. Very feminine take on Zeus. Uh, and these gods are very arrogant. Yes, they are. But at what point is it just meet the Spartans too? At what point do you have to draw a line in the sand and say, Hey bro, these characters, they deserve to be taken seriously still. Yeah, you're a funny guy, but come on, come on man, bring it back a little bit. You got Valkyrie, 
saying like, oh, I got my weapons. And then she holds up a boom box and she's like, is that a, is that a grenade? Like, no, it's a, it's a speaker box. It's a speaker. And then you got this pop hit from two, the 2000s. I like, I was like Jennifer Lopez or something. It, like, dude, Valkyrie's not even from Earth. Why? How would she even know about that song? And how is that even like a thing for her? Like, like she grew up in the early 2000s. It's just very, it took me out of the movie, dude. And it, it kind of pisses me off because when it, when this film gets dark, it gets super dark. Gore is super focused into this. He had no one-liners. He he had a good story, and it was undercut by by this humor. Thor, he got comfortable. You know, he was like, "Oh, I can battle. This is no problem." Um, and some of the humor worked, like the goats, the screaming goats worked. Those kind of things worked. The Guardians, even the Guardians were like looking at him like, dude, like, we're going to go. Like, we can't do this. They're like, you know what, this is just too much for us. Even us. The Guardians like, we can't do this. We're out of here. So, I don't know. I had a real love-hate relationship with Love and Thunder. And you know, then the ending, Gore wins, but then... Chris, uh, then Thor, you know, c- convinces Gore that you know, oh, I can, I'm gonna go hang out with my love, which is cool. I just, I expected maybe I, I just gotta stop expecting Marvel to be top notch now. I'm just gonna assume I have to accept it because I ate, I ate an, I ate an edible. I went into this movie because I, I saw the trailer, so I knew it was gonna be a comedy. So I, I immediately lowered my expectations. I said, you know what? I'm going to eat an edible. I'm going to go to see this movie. And I'm just going to go with it. And for it, they knew it was going to be... They made the movie knowing it was going to be dumb. Fun. You know. Okay. So for... They nailed what they wanted to do. But for me, as a Thor fan, Dark World was the best. And yeah, come at me, bro. Thor, Dark World was the best. Had the best Loki relationship with Thor... All that stuff with Odin, uh, Thor's mom, Malekith was not that great. He was fine, but the overall tone, I want Thor, and I'm I try not to watch movies of like what I want and take it for what it is. But for what they gave us, for what it is, is whack. It's whack. At some point, it's a spoof. It's a spoof. When when do we? Again, do you want three hundred or meet the Spartans? Thor, to, if I was if I was directing Thor, dude, I'd be like, all right, Lord of the Rings, three hundred, boom, go for it. But no, dude, they want to lean into this whole spoof angle. And Taika's like got to prove himself that he's a funny guy. Like, get it, we get it, Taika, get it, dude. We know, we know you're funny. Challenge yourself, dude. Challenge yourself. I'm worried for him, for his Star Wars project. I don't know if I want him to, to, to direct the Star Wars movie now. Because he didn't direct the script for Ragnarok. He directed... He, he, he didn't write the script for Ragnarok. He wrote... He actually wrote the script for Love and Thunder. So this is what it is when it's all Taika. No, dude. Bring it back. Reel it in. Reel it in. And then on top of that, we're hearing that... Uh, Marvel Studios or Disney, Bob Chapek, they gave Taika a mandate where the movie had to be under two hours, and the movie was an hour and 59 minutes. Like, at the service, at the sacrifice of your story, you're, you're gonna, because it plays like a comedy, and it's like, because they, they want a couple more screenings per day. That's all that is. It's all money driven. Taika doesn't like director's cuts. But he'll he'll cut Peter Dinklage, Lena Headey. They paid her seven million to be in this new movie. She's not even in it. Those are like top A list actors, and they they cut him from the movie. And then he's like, oh, the deleted scenes are because they're not worth being in the movie. It's like, dude, you had a lot of scenes in that movie that that could have been cut. I want a Thor edit where there's no comedy. They cut out everything. Cause I want a serious Thor. I'm tired of all this comedy stuff, dude. Like every once in a while, it's cool to have have a joke, but at the suspense, of, at the at, at the putting your your character 
you know, first. He's making, Thor's making fun of Sif, you know, for going to battle by herself. And she's like losing it. She lost an arm. And he's making jokes. It's just, it's just sad, dude. I'm, and like I said, like I, it's a good movie, dude. If you're, if you turn off your brain, and you eat an edible and you get drunk or whatever, beep 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 beep, then you'll have a really good time with this movie, and that's fine. Beep beep. Okay, but when you're comparing it to Infinity War and Endgame. We get it. You're selling stuff. We get it. Come on, dude. What are you doing? What is... Why do they... And Kevin Feige, dude, he just has no problem with... Letting each of these directors do what they want in the, in the within the parameters of... Of their story. Taika didn't even know Thor was going to be back. You didn't know. But you don't tell your directors the overall plan. Taika's like, oh, I have no idea what's going on in any other movies. I just kind of do my thing. And if Marvel tells me I can't do it, then that's that. So that's why people think all these movies are disjointed. Because nobody's talking. Nobody's collaborating anymore. Yeah, and it's cool that each director gets their own voice. But they have to have some kind of through line, dude. And it's just... It really bugged me, dude. The comedy. Meet the Spartans. I, I just, I, I'm going to keep saying it, dude. It was Meet the Spartans. And that's what I have to say about Thor Love and Thunder. I, I didn't really... It's not my favorite Thor movie. But it's not the worst movie ever. And that's my problem with it. It's like, come on, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? So, yeah. What do you guys think about Thor, Love, and Thunder? Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And come at me. Because, yes, Thor, Dark, Thor The Dark World is the best Thor movie. Uh, it has some humor. And it also has that Lord of the Rings vibe. Sci-fi uh, sci vibes thrown in there. It's just very telling where like where Marvel's going at this point. 